It's been quite a long time since we've discussed ring galaxies. These somewhat mysterious galaxies that seem to be all over the place that usually possess unusual ring structures that are somewhat difficult to explain. With the most iconic one visible right here, known as the Hoax object. A ring galaxy that even today does not actually have a very good explanation. And what's even more intriguing about this image is actually what you see if you zoom in. This unusual ring galaxy has another ring galaxy inside of it, but at a much farther distance. And though this was discovered something like 70 years ago by Art Hogue, a very famous astronomer, even after 7 decades, we still have no idea how they form. And so, hello wonderful person, this is Anton. In this video, we're going to discuss some of the recent studies about these unusual galaxies, mostly because they tried to use statistics to solve the mystery of these galaxies in the process discovering a little bit more about them, but still not actually providing us with very concrete answers. But I guess first, so what exactly are these galaxies and what makes them special? Well, quite a lot of them have been discovered in the last few decades and they do come in different shapes and sizes, with some of them not even containing a ring as much as some kind of an elliptical shape around them. But there's one thing in common about all of them. These rings usually contain relatively young stars. It's once again best visible right here. Here they contain a lot of massive, very powerful blue stars only a few million years old, with the central region mostly being much older and usually very quiet. But even here there are usually a lot of individual differences. And when Art Hoag discovered this object, he actually believed that this was maybe a result of a gravitational lensing. Or in other words, that this was some kind of an Einstein ring. And I mean, there is obviously some kind of a resemblance. But that's not really the case. Because over the years, so many different shapes and sizes have been discovered, and it's definitely not an Einstein ring and not a result of a gravitational lensing at all. With the obvious question being, how exactly are these produced and is this something universal and extremely common? Well, today there are basically three major explanations. The first explanation involves a spiral galaxy, potentially similar to the Milky Way, possibly receiving a collision from a smaller galaxy that basically flies through it, which results in a lot of density waves, kind of similar to a rock falling into a pond. And this might result in these ring-like formations around a galaxy. And so for this galaxy, if this is what happened, it possibly happened at least 2 billion years ago. And though it definitely makes sense for some of the galaxies, like the ones you see right here that we usually refer to as collisional ring galaxies, it does not make sense for all of them, and especially for the Hoax object. There are no neighbors nearby and no signs of collision. And so obviously some ring galaxies, and possibly even most of them, are not produced by collisions. The second explanation involves the galactic bar. The massive structure in the middle that actually has a lot of gravitational influence on a lot of things inside the galaxy and very often causes material inside the galaxy to move in a certain way. And so some spiral galaxies might experience what's known as bar instability that suddenly throws off a lot of gas to the outskirts, which then forms over densities thousands of light years away from the galaxy, with all these over densities of gas suddenly forming new stars, producing these unusual ring formations. And though this is a really intriguing explanation, and once again makes sense for some ring galaxies, it does not apply here. Mostly because, once again, in the center here, there is no spiral, there is no bar. The nucleus of this galaxy is spheroid and there's no way the ring could have formed in this way. With the third explanation basically involving gas from the outside. And here this gas might accumulate over time and kind of starts orbiting around the galaxy, basically forming a ring in a similar way that Jupiter and Saturn have rings. This explanation is referred to as galactic medium accretion. And so here as this gas orbits around the galaxy and starts forming denser and denser rings, starts to eventually form regions to resemble typical molecular clouds, regions for star formation, and regions that potentially exist for several hundred million years. And in this sense, it actually kind of makes sense for one reason. These rings might form in a very similar way to a typical spiral. But instead of having spiral arms, here these galaxies just form a ring. Their formation history is somewhat similar, but they basically result in a slightly different shape. But just like with spiral arms, the star formation is the result of sudden overdensities and a lot of different shocks inside the formation. 
But these are just propositions and there is really no conclusive evidence. And that's of course the mystery. The mystery that astronomers are trying to solve. And we actually know that a lot of these ring galaxies seem to exist everywhere. But when it comes to such a perfect ring, only 0.1% of all galaxies seem to possess this. But in pretty much all of them, the ring is usually much much younger. Only millions or hundreds of millions years old compared to billions of years old in the center. This is another famous galaxy we discussed previously, usually referred to as the Bursin's galaxy. The link in the description talks a little bit more about this. But so far, based on all of the observations, the evidence points at different formation histories. For example, the famous Cartwheel galaxy is very likely the result of a galactic collision. The same is true of the galaxy known as AM2026-424 and the galaxy known as ARP-147. Here you can actually see two different ring galaxies, with one just being the ring. And here it's what the astronomers refer to as the bullseye collision. Basically, a smaller galaxy passing through the center of a larger galaxy, causing the center to be disturbed and the outskirts to suddenly become very active. And this could be the explanation for most of the ring galaxies we observe today but definitely not all of them. With one of the more recent studies from just a few months ago, basically discovering a somewhat large diversity of various galaxies out there. They've discovered approximately 1900 different ring galaxies, which represented one fifth of all galaxies. And inside of these ring galaxies, 46% had an inner ring, 10% had an outer ring, whereas 20% had both inner and outer ring. Yet 6% also had what's known as the nuclear ring, or basically the ring inside the center of the galaxy, and 18% had what's known as a partial ring, which obviously means that they cannot be explained all in the same way. It basically implies that, generally, when something really powerful happens to a lot of different galaxies, they sometimes, in approximately one-fifth of the cases, seem to form rings. And in this sample, only 64% of all of the ring galaxies had bars. Which of course means that the galactic bar explanation does not apply to all of them either. But interestingly, most ring galaxies discovered generally had a much older stellar population. And they also had a much lower efficiency of star formation. Only stars in the ring formation were forming, whereas everything else was relatively quiet. Basically suggesting that most of these galaxies seemed to be kind of old and were potentially completely inactive prior to the formation of the ring. And so most of them are basically what's known as red sequence galaxies, also known as dead galaxies. Yet in contrast, they also had a lot more metallicity on average, or basically a lot of stars here were highly evolved and very likely the result of many different supernova. Which I guess does imply that these are ancient galaxies with a lot of really old, highly evolved stars. But it also implies that these rings potentially cause some kind of a galactic evolution or even accelerate the evolution of galaxies, dramatically changing their elemental structure and even changing the physical properties inside these galaxies, making them extremely different from everything else. And so yeah, these are definitely super unique. But it was really this recent study that might finally lead to some major breakthroughs. This was a study that used a combination of AI and citizen science to basically discover a tremendous amount of ring galaxies once again. Here, using machine learning, researchers identified 400,000 spiral galaxies, with 30,000 of them containing rings. And by using a citizen science project known as the Galaxy Cruise, they then asked various participants from around the world to try to pinpoint various ring galaxies inside of all of this data, which led to 30,000 of them in total. 30,000 never before seen ring galaxies, representing approximately 5% of the entire data. And though none of them have been analyzed in detail just yet, this is a really important discovery, both for statistical reasons and because it might finally lead us to certain answers. Here, by comparing a lot of these galaxies, we may finally have some kind of an answer in the future. Right now there is still none, but there are some additional discoveries. For example, most of these galaxies seem to contain properties between spiral galaxies and elliptical galaxies. So maybe this is a transition stage or a result of some kind of interaction that changes one into the other. Likewise, even though most spiral galaxies were usually forming a lot of stars and were generally kind of active, in contrast, ring galaxies were not. They're basically referred to as green valley galaxies. Galaxies that are not dead, 
but they're not forming a lot of stars either. Even though quite a lot of them were really massive and contained similar properties to the Milky Way, with the last discovery being in regards to their location and interaction with much larger structures, compared to elliptical galaxies, which are usually found inside really massive superclusters, or spiral galaxies like the Milky Way, which are often somewhere on the outskirts, a typical ring galaxy was usually somewhere outside of a supercluster. Or essentially, more ring galaxies tend to exist as you move farther and farther away from various centers of galactic clusters. And so basically you're unlikely to find ring galaxies in the vicinity of a group of massive galaxies, but you will find them somewhere on the outskirts or outside of this group. Which implies that maybe ring galaxies can only survive in the environments where there's nothing to disturb them. Which is generally also true for spiral galaxies as well. But apart from these initial observations, there's really nothing else we know about them just yet. They're still very mysterious and there are still a lot of unanswered questions and it will probably take years and years of additional observations in order to finally solve their mystery. And though some galaxies like the Cartwheel can be explained through collisions, explaining these perfect rings like the Hoax object or the Bursin galaxy is kind of challenging. And it will probably take just a little bit longer to finally figure all of this out. And I've actually been waiting for a final explanation for something like 8 years now. Some of the first videos I made about ring galaxies were approximately 8 years ago. And so I guess I'm gonna have to wait just a little bit longer. No explanations yet. And so until future updates or until more discoveries, check out some of the other videos in the description below. Thank you for watching. Subscribe. Share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences. Come back tomorrow to learn something else. Support this channel on Patreon by joining the channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.